Hey, hey, everybody, this is Mr. Perry, and today we're talking about the Peerless Fabio Twins, aka off brand Super Mario Brothers. And this is a cool little project that's put together from us or for us so that we can learn a little bit about uh, lists and procedures while also coding our own version of Mario Brothers. So I want to give you a quick rundown of what the code looks like and kind of what they start you with and describe some of the key steps that are involved in getting you started with the whole thing. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remix this project and put it into your own Scratch account. So now you have your own project saved as a remix. And at this point, uh, I believe um, we are looking at the code for the stage. So one of the things that you can do in Scratch is you can actually add code to the stage itself. Um, if you click right here, this is the code that uh, controls the actual Mario himself. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this stage. So the stage uh, says when you click that uh, flag, we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, first off, we have a, um, a variable called bit string, which is literally just a string of bits. Uh, right now, um, it's only one. And then we've got this um, block right here, which deletes uh, what is called a list. Um, and again, we're going to go over in class what a list is. But um, essentially what this code is doing is it's going to um, record a, a list of every time you push a button on this uh, game. It's going to record um, you know, what button you pushed, which is essentially just a list of moves that you've made. So if for whatever reason um, the game needed to look at what moves you previously made, um, it's got, like I say, this whole running list going. Now um, this is a forever loop and basically you can see um, it shows this bit string, it deletes everything that's in the history, and then it's going to start actually building uh, this list based on the buttons that you press while playing. Um, so it sets the bit string to uh, blank, and then it starts to check if the left arrow is pressed, and um, if it is, then it's going to join number one to whatever's in the bit string. Um, and if it's not pressed, then it's going to join uh, the bit string zero. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to join the number zero to the bit string. Um, and then from there, uh, it says wait 0 0.05 seconds. Um, and then if the bit string is not equal to zero, then add it to this list called history. So as soon as I press a button, I'm going to go ahead and press go on this bad boy and right now it's recording the left arrow so I'm going to hit the left arrow and you can see that the bit string becomes a one um, and as soon as it becomes or not equal to zero it starts adding it to the history and the, the reason you know it's adding it to the history is you can see this number uh, which tells you how long the list is you can actually scroll down and see how long the list is but it'll tell you down here also how long it is. So I'll do that a couple more times so you can see that the list is growing. Now the problem is for this program that you're going to make you actually want to have six bits that are assigned to six different uh, keys. So in order to make that happen um, I'm going to come over here to the if left arrow pressed I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate this. And when I do that, I'm going to add it down here. And we actually got a few extra things that we didn't need. We don't need both of these to duplicate. So I'm going to take this bottom one off and throw it away. So now it'll say, all right, it's checking if the left arrow is pressed twice. Well, let's go ahead and make that the uh, right arrow. All right, so now if I uh, click this, you can see we actually have two bits that it's recording. And if I do left arrow, it does one thing. If I do right arrow, it's doing another bit. So now let's do that same thing, but let's make it also record if we're doing the up 
uh, up arrow and the down arrow. So I just duplicated it again. I'll change this to be the up arrow. And then I'll change this to be the down arrow. All right, so this corresponds with our um, left, right, up, and down uh, directional arrows on the Nintendo controller. But we still need to assign buttons for the A and B button. So I'm going to go ahead and get my bottom two and pop these in. Make sure I'm doing it at the right spot. And for today, I'll go ahead and assign it uh, the A key and the B key. Um, the only problem with that is that the A key and B key are kind of far away on the keyboard. Um, so it might be smarter, and you can customize this any way you want to. Some people will do the A button and the uh, S button um, because they're right next to one another, and that's a little bit easier to play. Um, so again, that would be totally up to you. And then, uh, again, we only need one of these if the bit string is not equal to zero, add it to the history. So I'm just gonna take off those extras. All right, so I've done the first important step here. Um, I've, I've created the code to um, create this bit string and to add it to this history. I'll go ahead and run it again. And so now I've got uh, left, I've got right, I've got up, I've got down, I've got A, and then I've got the S key uh, acting as the um, B and A key. All right, and if I wanted to, I can do two buttons at the same time, and I can see the bit strings recording all of those. And every time I hit uh, any of these buttons, it's uh, adding that button press, those bit strings, to this list that I have down here called history. All right, so that's the first important step that you have to make uh, in this game is to go ahead and uh, on the backdrop, um, create this line of code that will uh, build this bit string and add all of that to our uh, history. All right, so now that that is done, um, I will in the next video talk about the Mario himself and we'll go through this code. All right, see ya in a little bit.